Yeah, we need the base guys. We need the base. Base, base, base. I'll kill. I'll kill. Oh shit, this is really bad. We're trying to go for the Nexus. We're trying to go for the team fight. What's the call from Immortals? The call is getting ace. They're at the finish line and they fall flat on their faces. Woo! Yeah. Hey guys, this is Andre, head coach of TL. This is a new series that we are doing where we just dive into some of our earlier games of this uh, of this season. This specific one is just against IMT where a lot of spicy thing happens and yeah, we'll just dive right into it. We got some Immortals and TL coming yeah. that way. Going into draft, felt like the best way to win against MT was heavily target Xerxy. And then on the other hand, they were targeting Bjergsen a lot. I think the Zillion is a target ban for sure. The Rise, I think on this patch people were just really afraid of, of Rise on red side. The Victor Ari matchup is not super eventful. I mean, Victor generally wins the trade, but Ari will TB back and use Pinion Dematerializer to just kill the cannon wave and just kind of keep pushing. Also, he went Ignite instead of TP, which I think is a pretty big blunder. Maybe Tristan is trying to ego on me because I coached him last year and he wants to solo kill me or something. Oh, oh hell yeah. yeah! When we locked in the Shivana's five pick, Weebo also played Viego Tub. You know, the timer started running down. I was like, yo, Weebo, let's swap real quick. Just like try to bait them to think we're doing something else. Even though it might not matter in the end, it's kind of like, they'll switch for like 20 seconds and that, that's, you know, that's a win. Okay, so he did switch to it back at the very end yeah. there. Okay, okay. I think this game I bought lane actually both ganked mid at level one to kind of break the laning phase. I think it was just kind of in the moment. We saw Ari had no TP, so if she dies level one, it's a big lead. We can we can give up some shares only, like a two two or three. Yeah, I'll try to push him to you guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Call JJ smurfing on the rift. It, it was like completely called JJ's plan. Bib is what? going <laughs> to <laughs> be dead again. Are you kidding me, Flowers? Honestly, I think this will work on pretty much any mid laner. You don't really expect that the entire bot lane is going to gank you level one. He's going to die and lose XP, and this is just going to put him behind from the beginning. If she has TP, this shouldn't be good because she can just TP and catch all six creeps. And then what we are losing on bot might be changed. In a lot of games, it's not even necessarily worth it, especially since mid lane runs TP in most games. This is one of those things when you do it, the enemy team is going to be thinking about it every single game in the future and be like, oh, remember they did this thing, or like Nautilus came mid and flash hooked, or they're balling gang mid level one. And, uh, when we do these things, I think it just uh, makes us a harder team to prepare for, and, and people get really scared of the things that we might do. We got first Drake, so obviously they are going to want to fight for the second one, but every fight that we take now will win because we have long engage on, on Jin. We don't have like the best setup because they were first to Dragon and we're trying to rotate Bjerg to be on the same side because we want to play front to back and they kind of want to pick people off. Usually like when you play Viego comps, like if you get one reset, you, you'll almost always win the fight. That's why we want to have as many people on the same side as possible so we can just burst whatever we hit with Nolas hook. And then, you know, Core JJ smurfs for usual. But it's already going to be secured, but Core JJ leads the way. Team Liquid's already going in, and Santorin is getting the first kill. They're going to grab number two. Where's number three? There it is. I don't think it's that good for them to go for the trade, but obviously it's good on our end to capitalize on it. At this point, our Jin's pretty strong. Our Viego already has two items. We have two items advantage on jungle. Mid is also in a spot where we shouldn't be able to lose front to back anymore. Not bad, not bad. I think we just pull it out and down. Yeah, I'm If they're front to back like this, we cannot lose, by the way. Our communication is pretty much front to back. They can't do anything. Just take it slow and just poke them out. Because we were already at a part in the game where we were, we've heavily outscaled them. So the only thing that we have to do, which we do well here, is just making sure that we control the zone first, force them to go into a non-flank position because we want the fight to be both teams staring at each other and, and hitting and hitting one another. And even the poke war with, uh, with Jin and the long lasers from Victor, we win. And we just need to keep staring at them. Okay, I'm just gonna hit it from here. This is Adi. Yep. I wanna go on Zero, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's good. Sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm coming. We do decide to pull the trigger and go really, really deep into the enemy back line. If we're just patient, there's maybe like a 5% chance of MT winning the fight, but because we're kind of pulling the trigger too early, suddenly it's kind of like a, you know, a flip 50-50 team fight. Team Liquid's already lost two, and boy, that went bad! Yeah. Looking Zin, I'm trying to blow Zin off. Now you've got the curtain call coming in. They're going to force the ulti out of the Xin Zhao as well. But without the Xin Zhao ulti, Xerxe has no real team fighting power. That ult is so important for Zin. And that means Team Liquid feel comfortable heading back to Baron. So here we're kind of talking about just do Baron. We got the Zin and Leon ults, which makes it really hard for them to re-enter Baron. So I think actually doing Baron was really good and was a good call. You know, we already see Graves has been pushing bot for quite some time. Uh, in my head, I was thinking, you know, it's one player. He will probably like 
Worst case, you'll take one inhibitor and that's gonna be it and we'll get Baron. We just need to recognize that what we are doing here is just taking the Baron and, and getting out. But, you know, it kind of becomes, we get the Baron and we're also looking to turn. And then because we, we're like turning, we keep trying to fight, we kind of lost track of Graves and he's literally just taking our entire base. This seems like a bit of a scattered call, but back in the base, revenge is getting work done. Oh, kill this guy, chase this guy, let's go for this guy. And not a single person is like, oh, hey guys, Graves is uh, slowly taking our base. The Graves is not a worry if we are just faster at resetting. They also can't stop us from resetting because we can just one-shot anyone and then base. Or we can have two people base and, and still fight with the three. I can even hold Graves by myself here 1v1 if I base. So yeah, just kind of a silly mistake uh, that we made, honestly. Santorin gets away with a flash. Both Nexus turrets down. All of a sudden, our Nexus is open and they actually get Ocean Soul as well, which we also hadn't really talked about. You know, Ocean Soul is not like the best soul, but it's still one of those souls that are really annoying to play against when you're playing poke. This definitely makes the game a lot hotter. I still felt in a very good position to, to win the game myself, but obviously when you have no Nexus turrets, any mistake can cost you the game. And I think what happens is one person dies and then that should actually just lead to us losing the game. And now Santorin's gonna die to the Caitlyn thereafter. Two for two. But the big thing, Kobe, jungler, still alive for Immortals. Baron is on the table, Elder in a minute. Yeah, they're looking, man. Are you okay, Hans? We have no guns. Oh, a trap. Hope you are fine. Oh, Flash no. They all okay. try to end, probably. Yeah, I think end is scarier. Even though we ended, like, usually that would mean they'd probably just go Baron and Elder, but because Hans died, that means uh, they could actually, like, pretty much end the game. Now they've got an open route towards the bottom inhibitor. The big problem here is that not only it's going to be a 4v5, but it's also that since Shivana was one of the targets that died, she will respawn without ulti which makes her kind of like half of a champion. Can we poke slowly here? I think yeah, I feel we, like have, we, have, to, we have to start fighting, okay. we have to start fighting. I think generally we could fight 4v5, especially because my champion is strong, but uh, it's closer to a 3v5, honestly. Like the Shivana is really not doing anything here without the Dragon Bar. Usually how you want to play it if you're, you know, you're five versus four, it's like as long as you're together, if someone gets engaged on, you can hit back. And usually because it's five versus four, the people with five will just win that fight. But in this case, first of all, Revenge walks up too early and their ball lands too far behind. Immortals continuing to move forward here now. Power of Evil finds the Everfrost route, but it's only on to Whippo. Open Char next comes it. out and now he's ready to dash around and see if he can find the rest of the damage. However, Team Liquid's able to counter attack and immediately kill Revenge. They just got really split up with like committing a little bit too early and then some people wanting to go for the end and going for the Nexus and some people fighting. Go, Caitlyn, go, go on the yeah. side here, go on the side here. They want here. to hit yeah. Nexus. I mean, yeah. they cannot okay. finish, they cannot finish. Arrow's hitting Nexus! And what? what else? There what are we doing here? We're trying to go for the Nexus, we're trying to go for the team fight. What's the call? from Immortals, the call is getting aced! I think if they just stuck together and, and fought us straight up 5v4, with the Shivana not having dragon form, uh, the game is definitely lost here. And, and if we do lose the game, it would really burn because this was such a free win. I'm tipping top, okay? I'm tipping okay, top, okay, top. Yeah, maybe uh, I, yeah. I can kill her. You, you yeah, guys yeah, should move to me, run yeah, to me, run to me. We're on to top, we're on to top. So the, the thing we kind of like ace the enemy team, we can definitely end the game. I think I might have said the words like, get me out of this game, let's just end right now. But it's, it's a pretty clear end here, I would say. Jin has a lot of movement speed across the map. He can even hit minions and get a lot of movement speed from his passive and fleet. I think Shivana is a decent turret pusher. He has the frozen fist item. Uh, I felt pretty confident that uh, we would be able to win. Put it's it, fine, it. we already have it. Oh, oh my gosh. god, guys. Oh my god. I mean, <laughs> I mean most of the game was good. What only, is... only better. Yeah, and dragon. Yeah, yeah. And, and dragon. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we really made this game complicated. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's fun. Thank you for watching Squad Pop Offs. I hope you enjoyed this uh, banger of a game. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.